Marwell uh, Wildlife is an international conservation organisation. We work all over the world, but here in Hampshire, uh, we run Marwell Zoo, which is a really popular local destination, local zoo. Uh, we welcome about half a million guests every year, so we're quite sizeable. Uh, we have about 300 wonderful staff that work here. And we look after a lot of animals. And the requirement for looking after animals now, as you can imagine, uh, quite rightly, uh, the, the, the considerations around their welfare and husbandry get higher and higher and more demanding every year. And we're very keen to keep at the head of that curve all the time. So our facilities need to be first class, world class, that's what we want. So we were repositioning ourselves in many ways about our strategy moving forward, what we wanted to do, what we wanted to achieve, and how we wanted to present ourselves to, to the public. And so we did a lot of work with some destination consultants and we also used Terence Saruk at that time to look at our uh, spatial plan, if you like, how we're going to use the zoo to the best advantage uh, with the public that visit us, uh, mindful at the same time we have to operate the zoo uh, and do that effectively. So that was a really good exercise for us to uh, learn more about Terence Saruk, how they work, some of the characters there. And we spent a lot of time in that original master planning looking at our spatial plan. Um, and once we finished that, we then rolled into the first big uh, capital project we wanted to do as part of that plan, which turned out to be Wild Explorers, which is an amazing concept. Um, it looks after our uh, white rhinos, our gravy zebra and uh, scimitar horned oryx, three iconic species for Marwell, which we really wanted to show off well to the public. And through a course of uh, workshops with Terence O'Rourke, they distilled from us that brief and they came up with a really appropriate uh, solution for us. And I say appropriate because actually what we weren't looking for was a sort of grandiose architectural statement. We wanted a building which was functional, uh, but fun. Uh, and as I remember saying, people don't come to zoos to look at buildings, but it needed to fit very much with what Marwell was about. And it needed to talk about first class uh, facilities. Um, and it needs to be economical in terms of the, the cost to run and the cost to build. And I think that was absolutely achieved. We had a uh, solution which was respectful to all those things. Mindful too that Marwell is effectively an ancient deer park. We've got this wonderful grade one building in the middle of the, of the zoo. So to have this modern building adjacent to Marwell Hall was, was, was quite a, a, a tough brief. Uh, and that was achieved wonderfully. So that was great. First big project we did. Immersivity is very important in modern zoo design. It's actually breaking down the barriers of the traditional animal within a cage into much more expansive accommodation for the animals. And you enter into their domain, so you actually feel much more part of it. And it's a much more genuine experience. Um, and so what the client was looking for was not simply a building, it was actually an experience and that was very important and it's something that we kind of, I think, captured from the early concepts. We developed the project as a series of storyboards that looked at a series of frames walking through the building and on future projects we're doing the same thing. It's very much about the experience, what you feel at different points in time, what you see, whether you see animals from different heights. Um, for example, your perception of a rhino is probably wants to be from a different viewpoint to an oryx. Uh, very pleased to be part of the project, both projects. Um, they become quite emotional in a way. Uh, they actually become very much part of you. We, we know that a lot of money that Marwell makes goes back into conservation in Africa. And again, this kind of responsibility in a way that you actually want to produce something that actually is successful, that brings more money in, that goes into conservation elsewhere. And I think that's really important. It's kind of something that the whole team has actually experienced and bonded together. With our Marwell comrades, we developed quite an intricate animal welfare brief. We had to learn in quite careful detail the animal physiology. Interesting examples would be, say, a rhino is deterred to smash through uh, obstacles if there's some barrier that is approximately chest height. We also had to line uh, the oryx pavilion interior 
with recycled plastic sheets. This ensures that the skin isn't rubbed and there isn't any damage because they're quite sensitive. Also, the landscape itself had to be quite extensive to ensure that they you know, have enough space to uh, roam and it's stimulating for them to occupy. When we imagine and design the built environment, we use varied tools and varied techniques uh, to test the ideas and the functionality. Uh, some of these are CAD, BIM, VR and sketching. And of course, supporting the conservation programs around the world is quite an honour. And this project I use as part of my examination as well, which is close to heart. <laughs>